Hey YouTube, Nickel and Diamond in here again. Welcome back to the uh, project shop. What we have here is we have the beginnings of a front air dam project. Um, we've taken a long section of cardboard we had lying around um, from other household work. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim it up and we're going to start mocking up um, what will be the beginnings of a design for this front air dam. Um, so we want to try and start setting up kind of our desired height um, and we want to start just below this ridge um, that's there in the bumper because that makes for a pretty nice natural guideline. Uh, we want to try and make sure that we do our mock-up um, using measurements so that it's even spacing um, between the ridge and the base um, where we started making our pie cuts um, and that pie cut right angle is where we're going to use as a mocking um, up point for um, the under tray piece that we're going to also mock up out of cardboard so that we have um, something at least to make a flat surface underneath the car. Um, it won't act like a full flat under tray but at least by providing a front air dam um, what we will do is instead of having fast moving air going above and below the wing um, with actually um, this wing shape on the nose of the Miata um, creating significant lift, um, this is a known problem in the racing Miatas. So one of the things that we're going to do is this flat air dam um, to see if we can reduce some of the lift um, and reduce some of the drag because believe it or not, these little Miatas um, have a very high drag coefficient um, on the order of above 0.36 which is roughly the same um, depending on your speed of course as a 69 Dodge Challenger well or a uh, Charger actually um, before they did the modifications to make them into the Superbirds um, the Superbirds by some of the same techniques um, same ideas that we're going to be using here um, they drop the drag coefficient to close to about 0.26 at the same speed, um, which is closer to much more modern cars. So by reducing the drag on this little Miata, um, hopefully we'll be able to pick up, ultimately, a little bit more gas mileage. As my trusty assist assistant Brezhnev is now demonstrating, um, we, want, we decided based on some initial measurements, we wanted the top um, of this new air dam to sit um, at about 13 inches above what looks to be about eye level um, from what will be our more flattened under tray. So by measuring from the very edge here with our um, folded over edge, what we're going to do is mark at, in our case, 13 inches all the way down and once we've marked each and every uh, point of 13 inches, we'll use a sharp knife to play connect the dots. And then go to the next step of uh, trying to at least tape it on in place um, and make sure we have enough pie cuts or make more pie cuts if we need to um, and start to get an idea where our flat under tray um, is going to be and start getting an idea for its dimensions so that we're uh, not really trying to form a full splitter sticking far out um, from the front lip because we don't want to go overboard with the front downforce um, that this will create. So maybe you'll be able to see from here what I'm talking about with the air dam shape. The air is going to come in, hit the air dam, and roll up and over the hood. And you notice the hood has a very nice sort of wing-like shape on the upper profile. So what that's going to be doing is that's going to ensure that you have a smaller high pressure area um, down at the base of the hood. And there's been a number of um, simulations done in computational fluid dynamics um, that I'm kind of pulling some of this information from. And the air is going to roll up and over instead of having this sort of um, concave shape almost in the front where it used to be. Um, the air is now going to interact with the air dam and go up and over. Um, and yes, we're going to cut some holes um, for the grill, but we're going to do some kind of interesting things where that's concerned. 
um, and reduce the overall area of the grill because only about 33% of that grill area can actually be utilized um, by the radiator. Now we have the most important part done, um, greasy paw prints here included. We've taped it up in the front, kind of give us a reference point. Um, I held it down while my trusty assistant uh, Brezhnev um, worked on tracing out the uh, line and getting kind of the rough curvature so now we at least have something to go off of. Um, and I haven't quite determined exactly how I'm going to terminate the line at the back, but that's okay. Um, that's the next piece I have to think about and decide, because um, I want to make sure that there's enough clearance that I'm not going to hit on the tire, but I also want to make sure that I'm deflecting air out and around the tire, because believe it or not, as the tire is swirling and churling, um, the air is turbulent around it, um, and the more air you can deflect out and around, cars, um, tires in the front, the better the air profile going through the air is going to be, the more aerodynamic the car is going to be. This is why a lot of the newer cars have almost a very flat front um, straight up and down in an air dam and also why a lot of the um, heavy trucks now, um, the full size trucks, um, semi, stuff like that, have basically a flat air dam in front going almost all the way down to the very ground. Here we're mocking up the grill shape, and what I wanted to point out was if you follow the line around the hood and it sweeps underneath, that line sweeps almost right into where I'm mocking up the grill. So here we are with the grills mocked up and um, everything cut out in the physical bump. Um, everything in the final product will be covered with mesh and the secondary grills or they're mostly for appearance, they'll be blocked off by just a dark black plate. Um, so now we have our profiles, and we just have to actually build in materials. Um, the idea was to try and catch another couple of these design lines coming down along the sides. Um, so you can see the curve all the way around the fender follows um, the curvature of those scoops. So I'm using the car's natural lines in order to achieve the